It's a little bushy tail next to my cooter's knives I guess got. What are you doing little girl? You know, I almost tempted to bring you inside, but either somebody dropped you off or what, I don't know. <laughs> Give you some more food. Okay, she's got more food. Number two can, three can, whatever. that's the third can I think. Anyway, so, um, I got a couple, you know, Cooter's only sold one pocket knife before. And uh, maybe I don't, maybe he's watching my videos, I don't know, because I was talking about, you know, Bud K and um, C.H. Goodell's. Cooter started selling knives. And uh, so I got, I had to get a couple of them. And he has one that's a flipper. And what's cool about it, too, besides, because these are very important to me. Um, because when you're working on a car... A lot of times your one hand is holding something and I usually keep the other the knife in the boot right down here right um, this is a little knife <laughs> but I usually keep the knife in a boot I make a holder for it out of leather and I clip it on a boot so I always have it with me when I'm walking around this one um, it's a flipper it's not it's not a switchblade it's just a flipper but it opens up quick and it says Cooter's 01 on it so <laughs> Which is fine by me, you know. Um, but it opens up both ways. In other words, you got the uh, flipper here, and you got the flipper on the blade itself. When the, the, the when you got to actuate the blade, it's not a switch blade. The other thing is, it's orange, and that's good because um, <laughs> you know sometimes you lay these things down you think they disappear into the wherever the hell you laid them down you can't find them it's got some power cord on it it's got a clip on it it's um a liner lock the liner lock is right smack in the middle so that's good quality it's um it's steel and plastic so it's got the steel and it's plastic on the outside with screws so it's a pretty sturdy knife it's pretty thick too and you got your thumb thing on the top so if you want to choke up on it you know, you can choke up on it. So it says Cooter's 01. And they're not, you know, they're not, you know, they're, it's, you know, the big thing about it, it's got Cooter's on it. That's what's cool about it. I pick up this other one, too. It's um, it's basically a Swiss Army knife. And it's uh, got 14 different things on it. So it's pretty small, compact. It says Cooter's 01 General Lee. Let me open it up for you. Okay, so this one comes in a little case, so you can put it on your wear it on your belt, which is good. Because, you know, there's not going to be a clip on this thing, because it's, um... This one I actually like, though, because it's not very big, and it doesn't have that plastic garbage on it. Where it, You know, you ever see those ones, um, you know, Swiss Army knives, has plastic covers come off of them? They, this is just stainless steel. Um... And it wasn't hard to open up the blade. Some of them are like, I need a pry bar to open up the blade. I can open up the blade on this. It's got the saw. It's got the scissors. It's got the uh, can opener, which is that thing. It's got the little screwdriver. Um, Phillips screwdriver. It's got the all. That's a Phillips screwdriver. And here's the all corkscrew. I don't think anything's got corkscrews anymore. It's got a nail file. And this thing with the little hole in it, I ain't, you know, I ain't sure what that's for, to tell you the truth. It's like pulling through some kind of string. I ain't sure what the heck that's for. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not sure what that one's for, man. I mean, I don't know if it's got directions on it or something. Well, I guess it tells you right here. It's got a knife blade, wood rope saw, Hook, hook uh, Disgorger, that's uh, number three. Okay, that's on the end of the, end of the, gee, this one's a little bit different, I think. Oh, maybe I don't have all of them open. Maybe I'm missing something. Oh, I am. That's this thing right here. Hook, hook, Disgor Disgorger is right here. I didn't even open that thing up. Uh, it's got a fist scaler. That's the hook disgorger. It's got the fish scale around here. It's got the can opener, the scissors, the bottle opener, slotted screwdriver. Number nine is a tent reamer. Nail file, nail cleaner, corkscrew, sturdy reamer. It's number 13. Oh, number nine, that's a tent reamer. A tent reamer. So, 
I guess when you're pushing through some cord, um, you push it through the canvas, and you know you, you you push the cord through this. It works just like a needle, so you can tie off something. That's what it's for. That's cool. This is good. This is a good mechanics. This is a very good mechanics uh, pocket knife. You know, there's limited usefulness on straight blades. I might cut a couple serrations down here. I'm a little, if I'm real careful with it with the Dremel. I always like having a few serrations because um, not many. You just need a few because it can cut rope a lot better. And also for a wire stripper, and sometimes it's a scraper, and also for cutting those plastic zip ties. That's why I have, you know, I always get the serrated ones. But uh, I have. Um, added serrations to knives. I might do it to this one. <laughs> I don't want to screw it up though. Be very careful with it. Just take a Dremel and you cut some serrations in there. Just do about four or five. And um, then you got a really, you know, super versatile knife. But if you know, if you, a knife with a few serrations is great. It's a great tool. I don't consider them weapons or anything. I mean, you know, it's like I, this is one. This is one pet peeve of me. I guess a gun is a weapon, right? But it could be a tool. It could be a hunting. You know. But a knife is a tool. Really, mainly a tool. And anything I got sitting in my toolbox uh, could be a weapon. Especially like that hammer or that big wrench or something like that. I mean, why they freaking got laws about knives? You know what I mean? Anything could be a weapon. A screwdriver for crying out loud, right? Hey, little cat. What are you doing down here, huh? my buddy but um, this knife that's a, that's a, this was only 10 bucks this knife was only 10 bucks I think it's well worth it man it opens up pretty easy that's a thing too I'm just like man I'm aggravated sometimes with um, some of these knives that are like this I can open this one up no problem and uh, you know some of the knives out there that are like this, they're pretty hard to open up. Yeah, this one I can. Oh, this one opens up. This is this one opens up pretty easy. That's good. <laughs> and it's got your little uh, thing on there. You can hang it from if you want to. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily trust that 100. percent But I would trust the holder. You know, the holder would keep it on there good. And actually, you could take this holder. And if you got like some military spec boots, you can sew this holder right to the military spec boots themselves and put the knife in there and you know close it up and you'll have the knife with you at all times. That's actually what I might do. I might do that. I might sew this holder to the, um, unless one of my other ones is already form fitted for this thing. Because this is actually, this one opens up pretty damn easy. It's one of the one of the main things I don't like about some of the knives is you got to use, you can almost get this open with one hand. That blade opens up like butter. And really nothing can go wrong with this sucker too, man. It's a good little knife. Ten bucks. And... It's got your thing for, this is great for, you know, I know it's a saw, but if you're ever trying to cut like hoses or if you're trying to cut, uh, you know, uh, these zip ties, and especially the heavy ones, man, the regular knife blade doesn't cut them good. you got to have something with a serration on it. And also, even the heavy rope, this cuts a lot better. But plastic, this definitely cuts way better than a straight blade. And, um, you know, if you're doing the wire stripping, like if you're, you know, you're putting some wire on, you're crimping, you know, you're fixing your tail lights, your side marker light, or even if you're cleaning off some of the connections for electrical connections, sometimes this thing works better to clean stuff off than a straight blade. That's why. But this, this has pretty much everything. This is a good little knife for ten bucks. Now, I don't like the plastic on them. Like this has got stainless steel, so it says Cooter's one generally dry. So it's a 14 and 1. It's only 10 bucks. Again, um, I, I use the discount code on it, um, ANT564. I, I order from these guys quite a bit. This one, again, I like this one too because uh, it's orange. <laughs> it's 
got the General Lee orange, more or less. It's like the Chevy orange red, I guess, <laughs> even though it's a Mopar. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's, and I, I had to get one. This is the only one that they got that's a, you know, one hand operation with a flipper. But um, that um, liner lock hits right smack in the middle. So that's good. You know, it's, it's constructed good. Uh, I like the fact that something's orange because um, I should have actually got my S-Wing Axe. I got one of them in blue, and uh, that shows I didn't get one in black because it shows you won't. You know, if you could lay it on the ground, you're like, where the hell? I got one in blue. Probably should have got got the damn thing in orange. But it's got the clip on there, and if these clips ever come loose, just get some uh, super glue with a little baking soda. <laughs> Fucking put them back on there. Sometimes they come loose, but you know, I don't know if this one's going to come loose. But if you ever have a problem with it coming loose, I, I fixed some of them with uh, super glue and baking soda, uh, where the threads were getting a little stripped out. Man, you put that in there, they, then they never come out. Then they're like made twice as good as new. Plus, it's got the paracord on it, which is good. Oh, I hear my cat down here. See her? See her? Anyway, what are you saying, little baby? What's the matter, huh? Yeah, she's freaking, she's, she's tugging at my heartstrings. I mean, I can't bring another cat inside, but uh, she's got, she's got, you know, she's got, I, um, I washed the, uh, the rug for her underneath that bench, and, uh, <laughs> Nice and clean. You know, it's a rubberized rug, some insulation, so she should be okay. Right, little girl? <laughs> there she goes. There she goes. Now she'll wander off. Well, I made the um, little knife holder for my jungle boots, and also, it already had a knife holder on it, the leather one. All I had to do was put a few stitches in here. To attach the uh, the nylon one to this, and it's it's inside the other one, so it's really strong. It's not going to go anywhere. And I like this knife because it's got a lot of different things on it. Like in other words, I'm always doing stuff. So you know, Cooter's Garage, right? Um, and I could pretty much almost get this thing open with one hand. Let me see if getting it. Yeah. Yep. Sure did. Because it's not. If the blade is it in there super super tight like some of them and I'm like that is sometimes you got to really pry them open that this one's good to go um, you know love that Cooter's one general lead drive one general lead excuse me on there and when you close it I did it so this closes but you can put it you put the leather like that so if, you're, if something hits this way, it's not going to open that up. Hi, little guy, girl. What are you doing? Well, she's freaking, she's really paying attention where I am, man. She listens to me. She comes by. She's like glue. So a knife to me is like a tool, just like this stuff. I mean, a knife could be a weapon, but this could be a weapon, too. I mean, you know, for crying out loud. And uh, very practical. So very happy uh, when I got it. And... Uh, you know, I always use that discount code, NAT564, 10% discount for repeat buyers. They'll tell you about it when you buy something. And um, so the knife really costs, instead of $9.99, um, $909 or something, right? So it's 10% off. So that's a, it's a good deal. It's a good deal. So I like it. I'm going to be, I'm gonna be uh, carrying this one around a lot now, too. So there you go. By the way, you know, one of the problems I've been having is, uh, you know, uh, if I walk a long period of time, it's not like I get tired, but one of my, I got a couple, well, it was now, it was two toes, <laughs> one of them was messed up for many years, and um, I've been using, I'm going to throw it in on this video, because, you know, people are not going to believe my claims, but, you know, it's separate videos, and I kind of mentioned it somewhere else, that carbon C60 and olive oil, that good and cheap stuff, I would start putting it on, I put it on here, on this smashed thumb and start coming in nice and pink it wasn't healing up and I start putting it on there it start clearing up and coming in nice and pink and it don't hurt when I press down on it um, 
I actually smashed another toe here weeks ago, and these are steel tip boots now. Um, um, it was hurting towards the end of the day. If you pressed on the top of it like that, it would hurt like a son of a bitch. Nothing. Don't hurt anymore at all. I was using a carbon C60 in olive oil, the, the good and cheap, for about three weeks. And the other toe, that was messed up for eight million years. I mean, it, I used to, many years ago, I used to work out only on the elliptical machine. I stopped running and walking um, because my toe would hurt, right? And if I was on the elliptical machine, I wouldn't be running. It would, my foot would be in one spot. Um, and so it wouldn't bother me. And I'd just kind of curl up my toe like that a little bit. And I could still work out and get, a, you know, use my muscles. Um, that was bothering me for many years. That doesn't bother me either anymore after a few weeks of applying it to my toes, you know, the ones that are messed up, <laughs> and after a few weeks, it started working right away, I thought, but I wasn't really sure. Now I'm 100% sure. It's like the problem is totally gone, man. So, man, you'll never find this out in a freaking doctor's office. Man, <laughs> but I just figured I mentioned it in here, you know, even though this has nothing to do that, that has nothing to do with, you know, these knives I liked a lot. But it, it does have to do with me constantly doing stuff and um, hurting myself sometimes or, you know, scratching and doing things. And don't go bitching me, bitching me out about this cheap tool set, the Stanley. It's not that bad. I just keep it in the El Camino as a spare. It's one of those I keep uh, keep these kind of tools in my car. It's like they're, they're good enough good enough. They're not the stuff I actually use most of the time, but they still work. You know, so somebody's going to go, what's that Stanley junk for? It's, they're not that bad. But they, they're they good for, like, I keep them in my cars. I got some in there. I got some in here. And uh, I got some in that little Suzuki and I got some in the old Camino. Not much money, but they're still pretty good. 